Right, chaps, so we're going to be doing something uh, slightly different today. It's not Bifrost related and it is going to be V Ray related. Um, it's just some fun little kind of cool tricks that I found uh, using the V Ray Clipper, and I just thought I'd share them. You might know them, you might not even know what the V Ray Clipper is. So um, let's just have a little play around and I'll show you some interesting things that you can do with it. So I'm just going to create a sphere. And we've got our kind of um, uh, triangle, prism, pentagon, it's not a pentagon, but whatever it is. Shape here with some bevels on it, and we've got our background. Um, so, if we um, don't select anything at all, um, and we just go create V-Ray um, V -ray Clipper, and we go into uh, IPR it, Everything is kind of gone. If we grab the clipper, we can lift this up and we can see that we are actually clipping all of this geometry now. Uh, so we've got our sphere and our shape and our background and everything is clipping. Um, we can rotate this um, and sort of clip it at a different angle. But also we can go into the exclude set. Um, so we can click on this and we can go in and we can say, look, we don't want um, uh, this plane to be clipping so we're just going to switch that off and uh, we don't want the sphere to be clipping so we're going to switch that off as well and then all we've got clipping is indeed the uh, center object and we can clip that and nothing else is going to get clipped which is cool we can also uh, use the object material um, uh, to uh, recolor this face here. So if I select this object and I go into MTL and I make it like red, we can see that the sides are red, but the um, interior face of the object isn't. So this is where this attribute comes in is that we can use the object's material, we can tick that, and now we've got the object's material happening inside it. And it works really nicely. So the GI is casting correctly and whatnot. So that's all good. Um, we can also use um, uh, effect lights, clip lights geometry, um, and that just removes, uh, sorry, we can use the camera rays only. So if we click on that, it's removing the, 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 the rays of the camera from, from the object. Um, let's just switch that off. So let's just go back to the viewport for a minute. That's one way of using the V-Ray Clipper. Delete. Um, we can um, select an object that we want to be our V-Ray Clipper. So I could, let's just say I duplicate this up like this and I'll just grab these two and I'll do a mesh billions uh, union. Um, let's just delete the history on that. And I'm just, um, that's it really, that's, that's all I need to do. So. With this selected, we could just go to um, create V-Ray, I'm just gonna drag this off, Clipper. So now our V-Ray Clipper, which has shown up down here, is actually this object, right? So if we go back in and start um, IPR in, and then we make sure that we've got our sphere selected and we move it into here, it is now clipping the object. So we've got a shape clipping a shape, which is really nice because obviously we can animate this shape. So we start to get some really funky clipping going on. Um, we can go back into the clipper itself and we can say, yep, let's just use the object's material. And that's that's all good. Whoa. Okay, um, so another thing we can do if we just come out of here is we can uh, indeed assign our own material to this. So I can go to, um, well actually we could just, no, let's just do it. Assign a mater material, I'm gonna assign a V-Ray MTL and um, I'm gonna make that blue. So now if we go back into the IPR and we go back into the clipper and we turn off use object material it's going to be using the material from our object which is quite fancy <coughs> excuse me and if you think about it it opens up some interesting areas um, so I could now go back to that material and I could turn on like some self-illumination um, and 
click on uh, self illuminate GI and that is now um, illuminating based on that so we can see though that it's actually clipping through our floor so we just go back to the clipper and we go to exclude and we want to exclude that plane um, and I think if we bring it over to the light it will actually clip the light um, let's just come back out here for a second grab our thing and if I just render that now yeah, we can see it's actually clipping the light, um, which is interesting, but we're going to turn that off. So we're just going to click on the um, VRO rectangle of light to remove that. I may, I may have to restart the IPR for that. Oh, we're still doing it. That's interesting. Um, Let's just go back into Clipper again. Clip lights geometry. Oh, there we go. Has that done it? It's still clipping. Let's, um... No, it's not. All right. Cool. Sort it. So yeah, there's there's some interesting things that we can do with this. So obviously we can animate it. We can go in and play around with the shader that's attached to it. We can even add reflections. Um, so if I just bring that down a bit there, we can see that this area is highlighting over here at the moment. And so we can see that new reflections are indeed turning up. So what else does that mean though? That means that, um, well, will it use refractions? Yes, it will. So we could add refractions to this now. Now we're starting to get a really interesting look. Um, I could pull down the glossiness of the refraction or refraction up a bit more and we start to get something interesting so if we had like a shape inside here um, which we're gonna have to remove from the set uh, let's find our new sphere there we go let's just grab our new sphere and plonk him right down inside of here and it's just going to give me um, an indication of how this clip is working so let's just start bringing it up there like that there we go we start to see what the material is doing now and we can see that we have got that ref refractive blur on there um, which you think about it it does open a lot of doors to a lot of kind of cool things that you can start doing um, if we go back to the material we can affect shadows we could add or oh, we could add um, some chromatic some dispersion going on in there so we start to get a kind of nice realistic kind of glass thing going on so it's really actually quite interesting um, the effects that you can start to make so I'm just going to dial all this back for a minute let's just get rid of the uh, refractions um, and I'll show you some other things that we can do that are interesting um, so yeah, so now we've got the color clip in there. I'm just going to go back to the viewport for a minute. Give my, uh, well, my computer a breather. So if we open up the hub shade, we can see that the, here's our V-Ray MTL. And let me just, uh, drag this over here for a second. We can go into the shape node and we can go into displacement material. Um, we can see if that works so if I click on the checker box we could go to maybe a 3d texture and start to look at maybe like a solid fractal to go into that um, I'm also going to select the object itself go into the shape node I'm going to go attributes I'm going to add a v-ray attribute which is um, subdivision and displacement quality and we can dial that down um, I'm also going to add um, what am I going to add here I'm going to add um, the actual displacement control and I'm going to click on keep continuity I'm going to pull that displacement down to about 0.2 um, and let's just see what we get right off the bat shall we so let's just go into the renderer Vero IPR and we can see now that we have indeed got displacement going on based on that shape and the clipper which is pretty amazing um, 
I could change some settings here. So look, now I'm doing something which I believe I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> it looks like it's uh, caused some kind of issue, which I kind of like in a way. So we've rewound that back and it looks like it's doing something with vertex faces. Um, that's kind of an effect that would be quite difficult to make um, on your own. So yeah, it seems to be um, doing something with the vertex faces of the object. So if we just come back into positive areas, we can like really start pushing that in. Um, uh, we can up the subdivisions a little bit and start to play around with that. So that's pretty mad and obviously we can go into the actual um, displacement texture play around with the amplitude and whatnot and um, the ratio and change all of our sort of things here um, but what it's going to be used for really is we can go back into that sphere and then we can uh, maybe change that to the same red and it starts to look like we've got some kind of erosion going on and that this material is indeed kind of concrete on the inside um, and on the outside of that material we can just make it a bit more reflective so we get some kind of contrast difference between the out outer material and the inner material um, <clears throat> so that we can just you know so this shape looks shiny on the outside but on the inside it's got a definite kind of concrete look to it we can even go further than this. Um, I don't know potentially why you'd want to do it, but we could introduce an image. So if I come back to the viewport, and I'm just for now, I'm going to remove that displacement stuff. Um, let's just pull that out of there. See, getting quite into using nodes all the time now, now that we've been doing a lot of Bifrost. So uh, now we've just got the surface shader attached to it. And if I go and now grab something that was playing with earlier. So we're going to create a file for the image. And I'm going to go and create this. So now we've got a file texture node. Um, probably a good idea just to save this. Quickly, I'm just going to call this uh, Clipper. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say that. <clears throat> um, so let's just go into my guy. Bear with me, scenes Clipper. So now I'm only doing this because earlier when I attached the file texture to this object and I was just sort of testing out what I was going to be doing. It did crash my a couple of times so if you are going to be using um, a file texture potentially think about doing it before but i mean we're all good at the moment this this looks fine so look anyway now we've got a file texture projected onto the interior of that object using the v-ray clipper um so what's interesting about that well it depends what you're trying to make but we could potentially go into this shader and go right um actually <clears throat> let's go into the opacity um i'm going to add another file i could have duplicated that one but we're just going to go into the opacity and do it and create a new file texture so now we've got transparency um we can see through our text which is interesting um and in fact we can go into that text and we can go into uh the effects and we can invert that as well for what so we've just got the text showing um which again is really interesting because if a client comes up to you and says hey we want to uh we want to remove objects using text <laughs> you now know how to do that um because you know clients ask for that kind of thing all the time but you never know that's my point um, so yeah, we can animate all of this and also you can take it a, a step further if you wanted to, you could, that, that file texture could actually be an image sequence. So we could have been in After Effects and animated all this text, moving around, changing text, um, you know, anything you want. And it doesn't have to be text, this could be like effects from After Effects, image wipes, all of that kind of thing. And you just plant it onto the, um, the clipper. 
So I think we've got a crash. There we go. Thank you very much, Autodesk. But that is the end of the tutorial. An interesting way to finish. But give it a go, guys. Kind of interesting. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.